So in this video, in this video we're going to look at techniques for graphing the cotangent function when we have both vertical and horizontal stretching and compressing of the cotangent function. So we're going to dive in by looking at an example. And the key here, we notice that we don't have any vertical shifting going on. There's no plus or minus something on the outside of the function. And we don't have any horizontal shifting of the function because we're not adding or subtracting anything to the variable input variable x. So the only thing going on in this function is vertical compressing, and in this case horizontal compressing of the cotangent function. So if we see that the cotangent function isn't being shifted, <clears throat> the easiest way to graph it is to understand that the general appearance of the modified or translated or transformed cotangent function is going to look exactly the same as the toolbox function cotangent of theta does. So what we want to do then is just draw a quick picture of what the cotangent function would look like if no transformations have been applied to it. So we establish an input act, an output axis and an input axis and our input variable is x our outputs are functions of x and then we want to remember that for the cotangent function the y-axis or output axis is a vertical asymptote and then some distance to the right of that at pi radians or 180 degrees there is another vertical asymptote <clears throat> so sketch in those two vertical asymptotes and then we want to understand that the cotangent function is broken into four distinct pieces based on key characteristics of the cotangent function and halfway between the two vertical asymptotes we have a zero of the cotangent function and then draw in the basic shape of the cotangent as well as you can with freehand drawing and it's going to sweep down along this vertical asymptote here and this is usually at pi radians or 180 degrees so that the distance between the two asymptotes is pi radians and we know we have a key point here that on the cotangent function corresponds to pi over 4 with an output of 1 and here this is pi over 4 this is 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2 90 degrees and this tick mark here is 3 pi over 4 usually and this is 4 pi over 4 which reduces to just the pi radians we have here and this key corresponds to a key point on the graph the ordered pair 3 pi over 4 comma negative 1 and those is as you recall they come from the unit circle they come from the fact that at 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians we have the ordered pair on the unit circle root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2 and because the tangent function is the ratio x coordinate divided by y coordinate we get a 1 when we take that ratio here and at 3 pi over 4 or 135 degrees reflecting this point across the y-axis we have the ordered pair negative root 2 over 2 root 2 over 2 and this ratio x divided by y gives us the negative 1 that we get right here on the cotangent function. So once we've sketched in <clears throat> what the cotangent function would would the toolbox function cotangent of theta would look like we want to come over to our function that we want to graph and then think about how these scalars modify the graph of the function. So this one half uh, compresses vertically the graph by multiplying all the outputs to the cotangent function by one half. So if the cotangent function is equal to one we're going to get a half times one is a half so this output is going to be a half instead of one and if the output to the cotangent function is a negative one we get a half times negative one is negative one half. And of course this that takes care of the vertical stretching the 2 here is going to compress horizontally the function by changing the period of the function so we want to deal with that so this is going to change the angles at which things happen because our function has been modified so these numbers are going to need to change and our job is to figure out what should go there so 
usually between the two vertical asymptotes we have pi radians this two is going to make pi radians happen faster so what we need to do is ask what value of x do we plug in to get pi radians in other words two times what value of x will generate that vertical asymptote pi radians and we divide both sides by two we see that pi over two will will do it so this vertical asymptote instead of pi is going to be pi over two your check on work is to plug pi over two in here and make sure that it generates pi radians so we know that this distance from zero to pi over two is broken into four regions so to figure out the first tick mark right here we just take a quarter of the pi over two take a quarter of the pi over two which gives us pi over eight and that tells us that this first tick mark is pi over eight which means this angle right here is pi over eight or this input i should say so now we just count up one pi over eight two pi over eight three pi over eight four pi over eight which should reduce to i wrote four pi over four four pi over eight which should reduce to the pi over two <clears throat> and then that means that this x coordinate here is going to be three pi over eight generating the output of negative one half and there we've got a reasonable sketch of one period which is what we were asked to do one period of our transformed cotangent function. If the directions had been to sketch more than one period, say two periods, then we would just replicate this drawing. We would say, hey, I'm gonna look at this distance between the two vertical asymptotes. I'm going to try to roughly replicate that distance with another vertical asymptote. I know that between the two vertical asymptotes, I'm broken into four equally sized regions. This tick mark is the four pi over eight. And now we can just keep counting up to put the tick marks in three pi over eight, four pi over eight, five pi over eight, six pi over eight. This is seven pi over eight. And this is eight pi over eight. And again, you could go through and reduce those ratios if you wanted to. And then we would just draw our function in. We'd say, hey, we're sweeping down like this through our zero and then down along our other vertical asymptote and we would label in the key features here we know this is 5 pi over 8 and we get a half and then here we get a key feature on the graph this ordered pair would be input 7 pi over 8 output negative 1 half and there we would have a graph of two periods and you replicate this forever however many periods of the cotangent function that you need do one more example for anybody who thinks that they need it so again we're graphing this function we see that there is a vertical stretch by about three units and there is a horizontal compression going on again we want to notice there's no vertical shifting there's no plus something out here and nothing is being added or subtracted from the input variable so no horizontal or vertical shifts so again draw the cotangent function the way it would look the way the toolbox function would look so establish your output axis, which is also a vertical asymptote. Draw in your second vertical asymptote, some distance from the first. Break it into the four equally sized regions. Draw in what the cotangent function usually looks like, trying to get it to pass through at zero and sweep down along its vertical asymptote. <clears throat> usually the distance between these two lines is pi radians so we need to say hey how does this scalar here change that so we do when does pi times x equal pi and clearly x will equal one so this tick mark here will be at one and the first tick mark here has to be a quarter of that so one quarter times one is a fourth so this is one over four 2 over 4, 3 over 4, and 1 is 4 over 4. This is a special point on the graph, 1 quarter 
Usually there would be a one here, but now we're multiplying by pi. So when this is equal to one, we get pi times one is pi radians. And this special point here is gonna be input three quarters and the output is usually negative one. But when we have a negative one coming out of the cotangent, we'll get pi times negative one is negative pi. And there we have a graphed cotangent function. If we needed an extra period, because suppose this said graph two or three periods, we would just replicate the picture like we did the last time. We would say, hey, let's look at the distance between asymptotes, try to get roughly the same distance, break it into the four equally sized regions, equally spaced regions. One is uh, four over four, so we get five over four, six over four, seven over four, and this tick mark would be eight over four, and we could go through and reduce any of these, draw in the cotangent function, the picture just replicates itself, should be roughly the same picture that I drew in the other frame, and then label in your key points. This is five quarters one, and this point here is the point seven quarters comma negative one.